Jesus talks to us all the time if we're listening to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ in Christianity. Dear Howard Storm, I am begging you, please watch this video. It's short and help me clear something up that's really bothering my mind. Maybe the Holy Spirit was directing me to read the New Testament. I'd spent a lot of time studying Acts and the Epistles. One of my favorite verses was from Acts 1.18, with the reward he got for his wickedness. Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. While it was violent and horrible, the greed and total lack of remorse that he expressed in the passage showed that Judas deserved this death. The Holy Spirit had given me an image of his death, of Judas walking into the field, then falling forward suddenly, his intestines gruesomely exploding from his abdomen. This was evidence of God's justice and palpable wrath against the wicked. Judas had thought he had gotten away, but God had tangibly and forcefully struck him down. While I'd spent much time reading the red-letter quotes of Jesus in the Gospels, I'd never read the story for myself. Of course I knew the story, but I'd never followed the details. So this is where my next journey in the Bible took me. After a few evenings of reading, I finally reached the end of Matthew, where Judas betrayed Jesus. I looked forward to reading Matthew's account of God's wrath against the wicked and remorseless Judas. I finally reached the point where I expected that to happen in Matthew 27.5. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. My tongue caught in the back of my throat. My chest seized up, adrenaline rushed through my body and my heart pounded. It felt as if the very fabric of reality itself was tearing apart. It felt like the paint on the wall surrounding me would tear open to reveal an empty darkness. Everything I had believed laid vulnerable on an altar, waiting to be pierced, waiting to be sacrificed to this horrifying moment of realization. This Judas was not remorseless. This Judas seemed filled with guilt. So filled with guilt, in fact, that he hung himself. God had exercised no wrath against him. He had felt so guilty that he hung himself. I panicked. I turned back to the verse in Acts, then back to the verse in Matthew. I braced myself to face the consequence that my entire religion was a mistake. For four hours I let the verses occupy an uncomfortable residence in the back of my mind. I tried to go about my day. I tried not to think about them. But eventually I couldn't take the cognitive dissonance any longer, and I turned to the internet. I found an apologist explanation and held my breath. Judas, they explained, had hung himself in the field, and then his intestines had fallen out, after he had decomposed. It made sense, I guess. Maybe I'd just been wrong. It still didn't explain the feelings I'd been given by the Holy Spirit about Judas being remorseless in Acts, and the sense that he had been completely remorseful in Matthew, or that God had expressed his palpable wrath in Acts, and had been completely absent during Judas' death in Matthew. But then again, maybe I'd just been wrong. Even though I had at least tentatively accepted. This young man was a Christian. Wanting to hear from God. Down here. In his heart. By reading the word of God. God speaks to us through his word. I know you agree. He's done the same thing to you. But when. What he says with the Holy Ghost. Spoke to him. God gave him a bit of tainted beef. That was poisoned with a lie about how Judas died. My question to you, Howard Storm, how the hell do we know God is speaking to us, truly? If Jesus, is, if Jesus is even real and speaks to us in the first place, has to be honest, Jesus threw this poor secret to the wolves because this. Christian deconverted and became an atheist because Jesus was not there for him.